course. <laughs> Okay, we are on. Hey, Chief. Hey, hey we're Chief. on. We're on, Chief. I'm looking. I'm trying to see. I'm trying to see how this looks here. Let me let me refresh this. I want to make sure we all look good. I see. I see Mr. Smith there. He's looking good with his guitar. All his hats in the background looking good. All right. Maybe I got to sit down a little bit. My head's right. You look good. Everyone's looking good. We're looking right. We're going to get this started, all right? So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone out there. Mr. Smith there, he's looking good. Thank, thank you to all the, the airmen, soldiers, sailors, Marines, Coasties, and family members for logging on and tuning in with us. Before we get to our guest, um, I just want to make a quick comment. Thank you to everyone tuning in. I know as, as we go through these live videos, a lot of people like to ask questions. And sometimes we might miss some of your questions. I apologize for that. It's, it's kind of hard as we're scrolling through to, to kind of catch up with the questions. We're trying to lump similar questions together, but I know Julie and the team there, the corporate response team are doing everything they can to answer all of your questions and comments. So thank you so much for tuning in. Now, before, uh, before we get to Travis, I'd like to introduce Julie Mitchell and Leah Matthews. Ladies, how are you doing? Hey, Chief. Okay. Hi, Chief. Hi, Leah. Hi. I feel like we've seen a lot of each other this week. Yeah, <laughs> almost like we're at work. Yeah. Almost. <laughs> so, Joe, Julie, please, without further ado, who is our special guest today? Oh, I see you're like letting me introduce people again. Love yeah, that. as opposed Thanks. to yesterday Thanks. when I don't, I don't know what happened yesterday, <laughs> but you were super nervous, so. You pawned it off on me, so I'm passing the buck back to you, Julie. I will take that ball and run with it. So today we have a terrific guest with us. He is a veteran of the Army, served active duty, reserves, and National Guard. He's our first Army guest. Chief, can we get a hua? Hua. All right, good job. <laughs> he served uh, warfighters and military families as an associate with the Army and Air Force Exchange Service for years as well. And right now, y'all, he is having success on the Texas country charts. Help us welcome singer-songwriter Travis Smith. Woo! <laughs> well, thank y'all. Hey, Travis, thank you so, so much for being with us. I know the military community is definitely going to appreciate everything you're doing. I see the guitar, so we're expecting some good music. Uh, so thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to, you know, boost some morale for the service members. Hey, Chief, how are you doing? You know, I was going to join the Air Force. Did I ever tell you that story? Oh, well, I, I'm, I'm curious about it. You know, let's jump, let's jump right in then. And why don't you tell us about a little bit about yourself and your military history? Well, I, just, to, just to jump back a little bit, I went down and took the ASVAB, you know, and uh, they called me back in. They said they wanted to talk to me. And uh, I had scored just a little bit too high to join the Air Force. So... <laughs> <laughs> So I got to spend my career in the army. Uh, <laughs> so tell us, tell us, tell us, tell us about that, Travis. What, what was uh, your MOS in the army? Hey, hey, chief, can I jump in for a second? Sure. Can we ask everybody who's watching um, to leave some love for Travis in the comments and tell us where you're watching from. And then if you wanted to start your watch party, now would be a good time. Um, but be sure you let Travis know. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Leah. Mm -hmm. So Travis, back to you. Tell us, tell us about your history. Your, 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 besides scoring, uh, scoring too high on the ASVAB to join the Air Force. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a sad story. There's a lot of folks in the Army that are that way. Um, <laughs> just, uh, um, we, well, one of the things we failed at was, was ordering room service, and that's why they suck us in the Army instead of the Air Force. So, <laughs> uh, you know, I had a. I'm from Brownwood, Bangs, Texas, and uh, we had a National Guard unit there, so I ended up joining up with those guys while I was going to college, uh, and I spent a few years in a tank battalion uh, with the National Guard, and I, I was with them up through uh, Desert Storm. Uh, we didn't get, we didn't go over. Uh, we got called, uh, I think we had code words. There was grazing herd and roaring something, and 
we were on the ready, but by the time they were going to call us up, uh, the war was over. They didn't need any more tankers. So that was, you know, that was back in the, when was that, 91 or something like that? Yeah. So that was, that was my National Guard experience, and it was good folks. I'm still, I'm still close with a lot of those guys, those National Guard guys. So uh, that's Travis, that's great. Uh, we know you were also an exchange associate for many years. Can you tell us about any of your previous roles um, working for the exchange? So I, I joined APHIS in 1990. Um, you know, I got to spend time at, uh, I was a store manager at Bergstrom Air Force Base. Uh, store manager, I, I was a SAM, and the, our audience will know what that is, a sales area manager at Bergstrom and at Fort Sam. They sent me over to Japan. I was at Yokota Air Base for four years, and I came back. Uh, I spent the remainder of my entire career there at Dallas, right there working with you guys. Uh, it was awesome. a good career. It was good folks. And, they, and you know what? All along through there, occasionally the Army would call, and they would say, hey, we need you to come do a year, and we want you to go to Iraq. We want you to go out and teach at Fort Lee, or we want you to do 100 days here, 100 days there. And the exchange uh, – nobody treats military members better than the exchange does that's that's what it's all about and so they were always welcoming me back sometimes giving me my old job back sometimes let me go work somewhere else you know in a different different department is it still going it we is have a delay. Yep. <laughs> Do you have anything that you want to add to that? You being in the Air Force and being assigned to the exchange, um, can you, is there anything you want to add to what Travis was saying? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's family. It's family, you know, one of the core values. Your family serving family all the way. And it's true. You know, we, we deeply, the, the associates deeply care about their customers and taking care of the customers is their number one priority. So I agree with everything Travis said. He's spot on, spot on with his assessment. You know, I wasn't. I wasn't quite ready to get out of the army. Um, I, I, I got my back and my neck banged up a little bit and uh, they decided I had just made uh, the same rank as chief. You know, I was a Sergeant major in the army and uh, I, I hadn't had that rank very long. And they decided that uh, my back was a little too beat up from jumping off of tanks and doing all that army running and stuff. And they, they told me I could go on home in 2014. Oh, wow. So, Tra Travis, how did you decide to pursue music? Do you um, do you write your own stuff and can describe what that's been like and then what the journey's been like for you? So I was exposed to original, you know, everybody listens to, to their favorite music growing up. And, uh, you know, my kryptonite is the, is the Eagles. And uh, I, I don't sound like the Eagles, but I love the way that they write songs and the way that they harmonize together. Um, and then and then on the country side of things, I always enjoyed the guys that told the stories. I, I wasn't necessarily into the cheating songs and the and and those kind of things. All I have a big appreciation and I love to hear it, but that's not the style of music that I write. I was more I'm more of a storyteller type of a songwriter for the most part. And then recently about a year ago, I teamed up with my partner, Cindy Jo Sanders, and uh, we started singing together. And, and when you go to our Facebook page, that's where you see Travis and Cindy Jo. Now we are doing our social distance and we're, so we can't do this interview together, but uh, she probably is the best singer I've ever heard. She's pretty freaking amazing. So we've got a real cool thing. We really enjoy uh, going out and playing our music together and, uh, the number one question we get asked is if we're married because we fight like we're married sometimes <laughs> when we're on stage, but when we're not, no, I've got a beautiful wife, Gayla, who works at APHIS. Our, I don't know if y'all remember when I did my, my APHIS retirement speech, I wrote a song called it'll always be APHIS to me. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's out there on YouTube. I think it may be the number one watched youtube video that i've ever put out from all the aphis folks going out there exchange folks going out there and listening to it i'm gonna have to go check this one out yeah it was a couple of years ago hey so so travis i know um 
when you were in Iraq, you wrote a song called 99 Days and a Wake Up. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, it's just a simple song. It, it's 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 kind of a rocking thing compared to what I normally do. Uh, but it fit the moment, right? It's not a sad song or anything. It's just, uh, hey, I want to go home, you know? And that's kind of what you're all, you're all feeling over there is, man, when is that date? When's that going to be over? And so we can get on a plane and go back home. And that's kind of what that song was about. Well, heck, let's, let's, hey, can we hear it? We can do it. We can do our best. All right, let's do it. Is that guitar coming through? See if I can remember the words. This is not a, not one I always do. <laughs> we got some, uh, some Jody calling here. Oh, 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 about was going home learned to count the days as we didn't move along 99 days to go 99 days and a wake up a hundred more days we'll be home This arm is done to me. A yellow bird with a yellow bill was standing on my window sill. You better stay in line, move along, sound off strong, sing a song. Ninety nine days and a wake up. A hundred more days, we'll be home. One man wants a new start on life. Another wants to go to college. Some fill a pool of national pride. Others just need a job. But we got 99 days and a wake up. A hundred more days, we'll be home. Oh, oh. Yeah, we'd sing, Sergeant Major, look out your window, see who's marching by. Tiny bubbles in my beer makes me happy, full of cheer. You better stay in line, move along, sound off strong, sing a song. 99 days and I'll wake up. Hundred more days, we'll be home. We sing, la di da di, everybody. Here we go again. You get a line, I get a pole. Meet on down by the crawfish hole. Stay in line, move along, sound off strong. Sing a song, 99 days and a wake up. A hundred more days, we'll be home. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on, Chief. Whoa, whoa. I'm on mute. I'm on mute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. We got 99 days and a wake up. A hundred more days. We'll all be home. Whoa, whoa, whoa.
Travis, that was terrific. Uh, thanks for thanks for sharing that song with us. You're getting so much likes and loves and questions on our live stream right now. Um, Linda Palmer says, love it. Thank you so much for your service, Travis. Well, um, you. you have a couple other people like Mike Immler uh, saying, hello, sounding good. Um, hey, looks like there are a lot of APHIS people who are watching and some others. Um, so anyway, just wanted to share those comments with you. Yeah, you know, but we're doing the Zoom thing, so I can't see the comments as they pop up, which is, you know, I've been doing some Facebook Live stuff, and I've got the screen over there where I can see people writing me. Uh, but on this one, I can't see anything going on, so I apologize if I'm not calling people out, too. Hey, Travis, there is a question on here. They ask, how was it transitioning from a solo act to a duo? Uh, better. <laughs> Man, when you, when you add talent, right? And uh, man, she's so good. Um, it just opens up a whole bunch of doors. Um, I, you know, and of course we have the band too. The band is called, by the way, uh, my band, our band is called Zero Dark 30 or O Dark 30. And uh, we've had that name for years and years and years before the movie came out. It's yeah. an old military. <laughs> You know, Chief will tell you, that's, that's just an old military phrase that says we're going to meet over here at Old Dark 30. Sometimes there's a cuss word involved in this phrase. And it just means that it's so early that it's not on the clock. That's what it meant in my world. That's how early we're going to be ready to go, right? So, so, so we've had the band. Sometimes we go out and we do shows with just, with just Cindy and I. A lot of times we'll bring... Uh, one of our guitar players, either either Brett or Sonny. And then, then when we can, we would do the full band show, you know, and we add Jim and Mike, you know, Mike on the bass and Jim on the drums and and make that full full sound thing. So, uh, yeah, but to, to answer the question, to, to transition from being a solo artist to a, a duet, you know, once in a while, I still have to go out and do things just, just with me because although I get to live this full time, Cindy Joe's got a real job. And so she's, she is an essential worker at this very moment. So, uh, you know, she's out there doing her thing and she can't always break away and go visit radio stations and things like that when we do that every time. Right. So. Travis, we got a, a comment from Chuck Ramsey, um, <laughs> you know, Cindy Joe, and he says, and she's better looking too. Yeah. And you know what? <laughs> So Shannon's better looking than Chuck too. Uh, Chuck's an old submariner, by the way. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, we met those guys, Shannon and Chuck, down at the Thomas Michael Riley Festival in Lukenbach. Uh, Thomas puts that show on every year. He's been doing it for about 13, 14 years. And hopefully this whole Corona thing will be able to go out and socialize. It, it happens the first weekend in June. I'm going to go ahead and put that plug out there because that's my absolute, absolute favorite place that I've ever played is in Lukenbach. Awesome. Well, uh, I want to read one more comment and then we'll switch gears. But um, I, I believe this must be Sergeant First Class Meyer, who works on Julie's team. He responded and said, who was Sergeant Major? I remember marching to many of the lines in your song, <laughs> Army Here. <laughs> Ooh, uh, that's right. And we, and we, we kept it clean, too. We didn't, uh, <laughs> there's a, you know, in today's army, I think they have to keep it a little more clean than they did when I first joined up. There were all kinds of words that we don't say on Facebook live. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. We appreciate that. Appreciate that. <laughs> so everybody's dealing, you know, with isolation and the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, can you share a little bit with the audience about how that has affected you and your band? You know, uh, well, I'm first. I want to say this: if there's anybody in the entire universe that is prepared for a stay-at-home order and to wait something out, it's our military members, because we have done it so many times in a different scenario where you know that you've got a certain area that you're allowed to be in, certain people that you're allowed to associate with, certain places you're allowed to go, and you have to be here a certain amount of time. So our military guys uh, and gals, you know, I said gals, that's, that's inappropriate for political. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
<laughs> but you understand what I'm saying. Our folks, our military members, they have been through this. They've lived this before in a different sort of way. So uh, I, I just, I think they're probably better prepared than the rest of the world to handle it. Uh, for me uh, and musicians like me, uh, I haven't done Facebook Live as a regular thing ever, for one thing. And we're actually recording some stuff. We did some really cool stuff where I got everybody in the band to hold their phone up or have, you know, their wife hold the phone up, record them playing parts of a song, and they all sent it to me, and I put it together. We've done two full band songs and posted on YouTube. We've never even thought about doing something like this before, you know, this came along. So the creative juices just keep going, you know. Now, bless their hearts, I've got close friends that this is how they make their livelihood, playing music. <laughs> and they can't do this right now. So, you know, they're out there, you know, they're, they're, they're out there playing live, holding their phones out there and playing and hoping people will tip them. And, and I hope you all know, go out and visit some folks. You might hear some really great stuff you've never heard before, you know. So that's kind of how it affects folks in this world. Mm. Hey, Travis, quick, quick question. Since you've been both a service member and exchange associate, you know, you truly understand our, our we go where you go mission. Can you tell us about a time APHES was there for you and your fellow service members? And what does APHES mean for the troops? Well, I, I think the troops just in a good way, as a troop, you expect APHES to be there, the exchange. You always expect them to be there because they've always been there. And it's like, and we, they always will be. When I was a young, you know, private or specialist, and we'd go out in Fort Hood, you know, on the north side of Fort Hood, there's mm -hmm. nothing out there but woods, right? Woods and tank trails and, <laughs> and, and uh, shooting ranges. And when you're, when you're the young guy, you're not in charge, you don't get to just hop in a Humvee and drive to the PX, right? You're kind of, they drop you off out there and you do your work. But then all of a sudden you hear this hollering and shouting going over here on the edge of the woods and there'll be an APHIS truck pulling up into the woods and they're going to have, you know, bottled water and they may even have hamburgers and corn dogs and snicker bars and all kinds of things right out there in the woods. You know, what a break when you're just a young soldier and that, that, you know, you always look forward to that. We had some other words we called that truck, but keep saying things like that donna but yeah that gut that truck. was like yeah 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 the gut truck <laughs> or or some other words right yeah but they were always there right they were always there you know when i was over in iraq uh it's a you know it's just kind of a hey let's load up troops and you know how many can we fit and we'll go to the px right and uh, get some supplies and things like that because, you know, the military is going to take care of your basic necessities. But the, sometimes you might want something nicer than, you know, just the basic stuff. And even, even in a war zone, APHIS is there. You know, when Desert Storm kicked off, I was working for, I was a trainee at APHIS. I was a college trainee. They sent me down to the Gulf of, uh, uh, to the Houston port. And we were shipping all the tanks and all the Humvees and, and all all the equipment out of the port at Houston, we built a store on the port as a college trainee in a little trailer house. And, and uh, we sit up right there during Desert Storm was first, that was my first encounter as a, as a, as an exchange associate. Deal That's awesome. Like that. Yeah. So during um, the pandemic, I understand you've been working on some new music while you've been self-isolated. Can you tell us about, <laughs> can you tell us about Cabin Fever Blues and the inspiration behind it? So Cabin Fever Blues is, an, is, is re, re lyric Is that a word? Sure, it, it, it is now. <laughs> so I wrote, I wrote a song called Cabin Fever Blues a long time ago. And it was just a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's kind of like wanting to get out and do things, right? So that still applies. But I completely rewrote all the words to the song to kind of fit our current state of mind. And I was trying to be funny, 
And uh, I can do it, I hope. Now, here's what I did not, I was not prepared. What do they say, Chief? Lack of preparation on your part does not constitute an emergency on my part. Exactly. Right? <laughs> you remember that? You ever told anybody that? Who say it? Yep. Yep. Right. So I do not have the lyrics written down in front of me. <laughs> so, you know, I just so wrote We're going to wing it. We're going to wing it. We're going to wing it, right? Let's wing it. So it's called Cabin Fever Blues, and uh, I'm trying to be funny. Uh, uh -huh. And, you know, once again, I'm just going to tell you this. I'm kind of a country guy, and this is not a country sounding song it, until I open my mouth. You know, I could do a Marvin Gaye song, it would sound country. But <laughs> it's kind of, I'm kind of doing this as a blues style song. Well, Joe had a job and he was highly compensated. Until Corona came to town and he got terminated. Now he stays at home, he started smoking again. He's got Netflix, he keeps his hands real clean. When Joe had a job, you know he never stayed home. But he's got cabin fever cause they won't let him roam. He's got the cabin fever blues. Well, Sue stays home, she serves supper by seven. She drinks wine with the news and she's in bed by 11. She's supposed to, hold on, hold on, I gotta change this. She watches Ellen these days cause Oprah's gone off the air. Supposed to be working from home, but nobody cares. Yeah, well, Sue stays home in her pajamas all day. She's got cabin fever and her hair's turning gray. She's got the cabin fever blues. Cabin fever blues, everybody's got them these days. Keep your hands off my Lysol spray. I need a word that rhymes with sanitizer. Why is everybody talk about a man and his tiger? I guess we'll blame it all on Corona. Get all my deliveries from Amazona. Cabin fever blues. I should have ordered from shopmyexchange.com. Yeah, and Fred had a band and he was making the rounds. He had convinced himself he had a unique sound. There's a thousand starving artists on Facebook today. Yeah, they're singing for their phones and give you options to pay. Fred had a band and he was booking some shows. He's got cabin fever and he's low on dough. Yeah, the cabin fever blue. Cabin fever blues, everybody's got them these days. Keep your hands off my Lysol spray. I need a word that rhymes with sanitizer wines. Everybody talking about a man and his tiger. I guess we'll blame it all on the corona. And all my deliveries from Amazona. You got the cabin fever blues. Cabin Fever Blues. Should have ordered from shopmyexchange.com. Is what I should have done. <laughs> hey, Travis, that was awesome. This should be the anthem of our times.
<laughs> hey, I got a I got a question that came up. Chris Ward asked, and it kind of ties into this since you know the lyrics you wrote, you know, uh, pertain to the current times. He asked, "What is your songwriting process, and how long does it take you to write a song?" That song took me about fifteen minutes. I've got a couple other songs I've been waiting on about three years to finish. So uh, it just, sometimes it just hits you. Uh, my process, I'll tell you where I've had the most success. I'll drive down the road because I like to drive um, and I'll turn the radio off and I'll just ride in silence. And, and sometimes just things will, will come into your head when you're not being inundated with other, you know, with other things coming at you and you can just clear your mind. And I've, I've written songs. I bet you I've written a dozen songs driving down the road, uh, quiet like that. I've written songs riding on a riding lawnmower with just hearing that, that mower and concentrating on keeping a straight line, trying to make my, my yard look like the Texas Ranger stadium or something, you know? Uh, but when you can, when I, for me now, now I, I got friends that, they, they talk about drinking the whiskey and getting, you know, and writing when they're sad and down and it just, just that feeling comes out. I'm not that way. I kind of have to be in a good mood, in a good state of mind to clear my mind. I, I don't, I don't, I've never written a song when I was just down and feeling bad, but I know folks that do. Yeah. Janine, uh, Janine says your funniest song is how can I miss you when you won't leave? <laughs> yeah and you know you know who gave me that line sandy moss gave me that line San, you know i don't know if y'all know sandy she's she's a long time apis girl and uh she's she gave me that line how how and i changed it to how am i supposed to miss her if she won't ever leave uh, we're we are in the process that's a you know we went and redid that in the studio about two months ago with the full band and uh and we're gonna do a video for that song. Now the audio portion is finished; it's completed, and uh, we're gonna to try to make a, a funny video with that song. And I'm gonna to try to get my wife Gayla. She works in SD, by the way. Um, I'm gonna to try to get her to be the star of the sh star of the video. She's kind of pushing back right now. She's she doesn't know what she thinks about putting curlers in her hair and and, and a bathrobe, and you know, <laughs> she's not real sure about that, but. I think she should do it. I, I come on, Gayla. Let's let's yep. do it. Take do one it. for the team, Gayla. I think, I think she's watching. You know, she's. I'm here in the in the first floor. This used to be the garage, and it's now the Travis room, the music room. <laughs> now Gayla is upstairs. Uh, she we've set a little office up up there, and then Sydney, uh, our daughter works for Aphis too. She's up there doing some training right now. So they're in the other part of the house. And so we're a, we're a military family. Let me tell you, we are a military family. Hey, you know, uh, you just told me all this. And every time when I, when I first came to the exchange, they always say 85% of AP's associates are, are, you know, tied into the military. And, and, you know, the first year I was like, yeah, okay, I got it. I, I get it. Right. It's a stat. But as I talk to more and more people and you just, you just further prove the point, right? Your wife works for APHIS, your daughter works for APHIS. And as I walk through the building, I start meeting people and, and then I, I meet their children. I meet, you know, their, their spouses. And I'm like, you're, you're married to that person. It's, it's amazing. And, you know, and it really I, is. It really is a family, too. It is. Yes, it really is. It, it is a big family. Um, we got a question out here. If you from Sandy Lou, if you could play with anyone, who would it be? Oh, goodness gracious. That, that's tough, you know. Um, so countryside of my life would be Merle Haggard, you know, bless his heart. He's, you know, he's passed away, but he was the, the, you know, the common man's poet. And uh, he is my all time country music hero. If I could get on stage with the Eagles though, that would be amazing. You know, that would be cool. They are, they are my kryptonite and I'm Gala. Are you watching Gala? I've never got to see them live. <laughs> I'm just saying. I've like never got to see the Eagles. <laughs> Fleetwood Mac's pretty far up there too. 
Hmm. You said she's an SFD? She's an who? Gala? She's an SD. She's a she's a planner. Uh, planner. All right. Yeah, she's a planner in SD. In merchandising. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna go find her. She's on the second floor. Then I'm gonna go find her. Watching. And her and try yeah, to yeah. She says you, I'm you, ready you, to give it a go. She what's that? She's watching and she says I'm ready to give it a go. Okay, there she goes. You have You're it gonna... in writing, so there, you know, screenshot that. Do what you got to do with that to get her. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to my girl, Tara Bone, too. Tara is the one that's going to do the video. She's our videographer. When it's a, any good photographs you see of, of, of the band, me and Cindy Joe, Tara Bone took those photos. Any, any photo you see that you think is a good looking one, she took it. Guaranteed. Awesome. Yeah. Shout out. No. <laughs> yeah. Shout out. Exactly. <laughs> hey, there was a question here, and I'm not, I can't remember who, who wrote it. Leah, did you see? Somebody says, uh, are you gonna do a show with Kelly? Have you have you spoken with her? I'm not sure who Kelly, who they're referencing when they say Kelly. I don't know. Did you, did you see that question? Leah? Yes, I see it. It's a person's name is Jackie Pride, who says you should do a show with Kelly. Have you ever spoke with her? I don't know. I'm not sure who the Kelly is. I mean, I know a couple of Kellys, but can't think of anyone that I personally know mm -hmm. that is a uh, that is in the world that I'm in. Well, well, Jackie, so Jackie, if you, wanna... Jackie, if you want to clarify, yeah. yeah. Sorry, Chief. Go ahead. Jackie, if you want to clarify which Kelly, who you're talking about, let us know. We'll, we'll, the country singer, she says. Okay. Hey, uh, I just noticed your shirt, by the way. And that, and that online shopping benefit for all veterans that's why I contacted Sandy Lute about, hey, I'd like to be part of that. It was when we when Congress allowed people with the 214, right, to come on and shop. That was very, that's very cool. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Julie and I are wearing matching shirts today. Uh, we yes. <laughs> Where's my we're shirt? We're out at events and working outreach things so we can let people know that veterans can shop with us online. That's true. And it's, Travis, I'm sure you're probably well aware, you know, disabled vets are allowed to actually shop in the store. Disabled vets yeah, yeah, I saw that. You saw yeah. that this year. So that's I've, a good. I've passed that information on to folks that I, when I come across that situation. I've got a good friend of mine that is a songwriter. He, he, they, it's a pair. They call themselves Proud Country, by the way. Give them a shout out, too. But what that what he does in his spare time, he's a seven time he's deployed seven times in the army, and he came back and he went through some stuff. But he teaches guitar over at the VA in Fort Worth, and uh, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, good folks. Yeah. That is awesome. Well, speaking well speaking of veterans, um, you know what what advice do you have for others? You know, for veterans who are serving during these challenging times. Um. You know, this is kind of coming from a leadership point of view, right? But uh, reach out to your folks and make sure they're doing okay. And they're, and you're not just, you know, we've got technology just exactly like we're using right now. And you can look them in the eye through a computer and make sure that, you know, as a leader, and everybody can be a leader, right? You don't have to have a, a rank on your shoulder to be a leader. Make sure that your buddies are holding up and you know have that communication that's that's what i would it just encourage because you know you get locked down like this and if somebody was already kind of dealing with something this is not a helpful situation so you know reach out hold your buddy up wise words wise words sorry major thanks so Travis, you know, the exchange word mission is essential and especially now during the pandemic, our stores and restaurants, they're still open to serve the military communities. Um, so as someone who's been there with us on both sides, any words of hope that you'll have for our 33,000 associates who are still working, still in the stores, still in contact with people, um, you know, during these challenging times? I would just say that essential is the key word there. You know, the, the exchange is, has been essential for 
I'm thinking almost 125 years, something like that. Uh, yeah. It, I, what year is it? I'm not even sure. 1895. 1895, right? So, oh, this is 125 year, isn't it? It is. That's pretty good on my part, by the way. I was impressed. Uh, <laughs> 125 years they've been essential and that that goes through a whole bunch of crazy stuff that our world has has put on us right and and you know our associates they are essential they need to you know i'm sure i know they feel essential but yeah thank you i guess is what i would be saying Thank you for that, Travis. That means a lot to the people who are watching. We have a lot of um, our, of our exchange team watching along with us right now. Um, we have, his name is Ken Morris. He's from Dias. Uh, I don't know if he's an associate or not, but he's watching, says hello. Um, um, he that's where I got us. hired, by the way. Oh, really? That's where I did my interview. Ken Brewington hired me. He was the general manager at Dias at the time. Oh, awesome. Um, Sergeant H, he works with Chief Reyes in our uh, at our headquarters. He says Hua, so you have another Hua. airman saying Hua. So that's and bless good. His heart. Um, Linda Logan Palmer loves the exchange. Her husband is a 35 year Army veteran. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Wow, that's a long time. It's a long time. Thank you very much. It's not um, Jim Skibo, but it's a long time. <laughs> Jim Skibo, I think Jim Dr. Skibo holds the record. He's over 50. I know he's over 50. <laughs> he's still around. He's still running. He's still riding his bike. He, hey, he's still, he's staying healthy. He is an impressive but, man. I yeah, mean, sure. 50 years of service, right? Not yes. Even. 50 years of service. Yes. How impressive is that? <laughs> I want to, I also don't know if you guys clarified, but it looks like Jackie was talking about Kelly Clarkson. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know Kelly. That's that's a little above my pay range, but <laughs> I would love to meet her. Same. <laughs> she is an amazing singer. She's so, actually so, uh, from the DFW area, I believe. Yes, from, she is. From yeah. Yeah. So, so speaking of singers, Travis, who's who are you listening to during this pandemic? Who's on Travis Smith's playlist? You know what? I'm I'm doing this a lot. i have I've got a lot of friends out there uh, playing Facebook live shows and uh, trying to trying to survive. I'm listening to a lot of those a lot of those guys. You know, uh, some guys in my world that we listen to a lot. I want to. I would encourage you to go check out Thomas Michael Riley, Tommy Alverson, Saints Eleven, my buddy Dave Thomas. Oh, let me tell you what Dave Thomas says. Dave says you can't drink all day unless you start in the morning. That's <laughs> Uh, my buddy Jason Heron from right here in town. There's, there's just all, you know, Max Stalling, the uh, Black Top Gypsy. I'm looking over here at a poster that I'm a part of, and the, all these folks uh, are, are friends of mine. And uh, so those are the top people that that I'm listening to. I'm also bumping into people I've never heard of, and you know, oh, that was a really cool song. And I, you know, and when you're out playing all the time, you don't get to hear other people often right and so this actually does give me a chance to hear some really cool stuff that i've never heard before awesome thanks for sharing that travis um one really fun question that we've been asking our guests is um which of your songs should the viewers put on their COVID 19 playlist and why oh that's easy um uh, we've got a song that's on the radio right now and i'm not trying to play it you know, with just me and my guitar, because for one thing, it's a duet between Cindy Joe and I, and it's called Up to Kansas City. And uh, we are, it just launched for it. And we're trying to live in the Texas uh, music scene, but you can, you can go out there and hear it on Spotify uh, or on YouTube or all those places, Amazon uh, music, all those places. But that's the song that uh, we're real proud of the way it came out. Uh, it's, a, it's a song about a relationship that almost worked out. <laughs> I listen to that. That's a, that's a really catchy song. It's something that kind of gets stuck in your head after you've heard it a time or two. So congratulations on that. That's a, it's a really, really good song. Yeah, call your radio stations and say, hey, play that thing. Thank you. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> 
Very nice of you to ask that question. So Travis, it's been super great having you with us. Where can people go online to, for, to find out more about you and your music? So the, the common place is the Facebook page. And that one is, uh, oh, it's Travis and Cindy Joe is probably, I know there's an at sign in Travis at Cindy Joe. You can get there that shortcut way. But okay. yeah, that's where you can see our information. We've got a website out there too. They're kind of linked together. And that's just the Travis, www, you don't have to say that anymore. Travis and Cindy Joe music.com. But that's kind of linked to the Facebook page too. So. So it sounds like Facebook is the place is the place to go to to hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah? and this yeah, in these times, yeah, that's that's kind of our social gathering point, right? We'll yes. have your Facebook page tagged in this post as well, so people can easily get to it from here, Travis. Well, that's very cool. So Travis, one more fun question. I got a, I got a question from Sergeant H. Uh, he says you mentioned. Uh, Tiger King in your earlier song. <laughs> <laughs> he says, should Joe Exotic be set free? What do you think? I don't care. <laughs> I, I tried to, you know what? Uh, this what is about just been... Carol Baskins? Did she do it? <laughs> you know what? I didn't watch it. I, everybody's talking about it. Gayla and I sit down to try to watch it. We made it for about an episode and a half. And uh, <laughs> it just wasn't right in our wheelhouse you know <laughs> we were watching ozark and, uh, oh. right? and uh, that's more along the lines of stuff that we enjoy and stranger things and um uh, i don't know there's we we have a whole bunch of them that we we'll go watch an episode here and later we'll go watch another episode of different different ones we follow but that one tiger king was not i probably lost half our fan base right there but it wasn't my, it wasn't okay. it wasn't my style of a show it's not for everyone that's okay yeah but i did make fun of it in my song so you're keeping up with pop culture that's good i gotta throw a pop culture reference in there right yes sir you know what Thomas? if it makes you feel better i cannot watch stranger things i've tried and tried and i just i can't maybe it reminds you of the 80s too much <laughs> Leah doesn't remember the 80s. <laughs> she wasn't born. It's like a 90s baby. <laughs> I wasn't born in the 80s. <laughs> Just shut up, okay? <laughs> I know. That's all I got to say about that. Sorry, Leah. You know I love you. <laughs> really likes to make fun of my age. It's okay. <laughs> oh, no, no. You're the one making fun of everybody else's age is what you're doing. <laughs> Hey, Travis, so I heard you have a song called Good Company. Do you mind playing that before, before we go? You know, I was thinking about it. Yes, and I'll do it. And I'm proud of this song. It is completely different change of, of, of course from the other stuff I've been playing. This one's, this one's a real song. It's not a funny thing or anything. And uh, uh, It's kind of in the frame of mind where sometimes things aren't great and your buddies are trying to get you, come on, let's go to Buffalo Wild Wings and hang out or, or go to this or go to that. And you just tell them, basically, I don't think I would be very good company. Just that's what it's about. And so it's, yeah, it's kind of a sad song, actually. But I'm going to do it anyway because I like it. It's See if I can remember this one. I haven't done it in a little bit, too. Seems the wind is always there Blowing across my face I clock in and try not to spend time Staring into space There's expectations in my life I've got bills to pay But I'm afraid I won't be good company today On the job I managed somehow to stumble through the haze. 
crowded room intensifies the feeling of malaise. I certainly appreciate the kind things you had to say. I'm afraid I won't be good company today. I'm afraid I won't be good company today. I try to smile, say hello, if someone tells me, hey, it hasn't been quite long enough since she went away. But I'm afraid I won't be good company today. Now the wind is blowing rain And I'm still trying to dull the pain Yesterday I found a vacation picture frame I don't think I'll ever go back to Corpus Christi Bay But I'm afraid I won't be good company today But I'm afraid I won't be good company today. I try to smile, say hello, if someone tells me, hey, it hasn't been quite long enough since she went away. But I'm afraid I won't be good company today. Hasn't been quite long enough since she went away. Hey, I'm afraid I won't be good company today. Yeah, I'm afraid I won't be good company today. lost my earplugs in. Awesome. Thank you, Travis. Um, just want to take a second to uh, read a couple more comments. So Kim Simmons says, thank you for sharing your beautiful talent. Um, oh, sweet. You've also had Franc Francis Holmes saying Fort Benning is tuned in. Um, Susan Quick says, up to Kansas City, got it, and we'll check it out. Oh, that's very cool. Kelly Northcutt has been watching. Um, hey, and Kelly. She says, she says hi um, to it's you. It's been a long Kansas time. I hadn't seen Kelly in a long time. Me too. It's been a really long time. And then Elena McMichael um, is watching, and she just gave you some claps. Did she roll her eyes? <laughs> she did. She <laughs> gave you the clapping hand. Oh, well, tell, tell Elena that this is the first time that I've gone on Facebook Live for AFA since I retired and see if she'll roll her eyes with that. <laughs> it's an inside joke. Kelly, uh, Kelly Northcutt also said earlier, she said that that was something she could hear Sandy Moss saying. And Elena, yes, said, yes she's rolling her eyes. <laughs> Jessica Medby says that was spirit lifting to hear today. Thank you. And that I think is exactly what we've been trying to do with by having you here with us. And so mission accomplished. Cool. Very cool. That's true. Hey, Travis, thank you. It was an honor having you today. Thank you for your service to this great nation. And of course, to your service, for your service to the exchange. We deeply appreciate it. Um, we're going to give you the last on the way out before we say goodbye. 
plug in whatever you want to plug in, whatever last messages you have, this is your chance. Thank you so much for being on. We truly appreciate everything you've done and everything that you are doing. Go check out, uh, just to be sure, go check out Up to Kansas City. It's on radio. And of course, you can check it out online. Well, I don't have much to add except stay home, say, uh, you know, be safe. Um, don't touch your face. You know, thank you all very much. I saw that, you know, keep your, uh, keep your last saw handy. Uh, and uh, I miss, I miss being out around people a lot. So, but thank you all very much for inviting me. This is uh, exceptionally cool. Thank you. We, you been, you were fantastic. Truly fantastic. It was really nice to meet you and thank you for spending some time with us. Well, thank y'all. Yep. Thanks, Travis. Thank you for your thank service you, and for joining us. Bye. See y'all. Bye y'all.